Hey everybody, Kim here, and I've got a logic deduction puzzle game that is perfect for replayability and the detective who may not be the fastest, but the most efficient. It's called The Key. Recently, Haba distributed three games in the Key series, and what I'm going to share with you today is just one of them. It's called Sabotage at Lucky Llama Land, and you are playing investigators. You're, you're detectives, essentially, and you're trying to figure out who sabotaged what rides at this fun theme park. There are three suspects, there are three weapons, and there are three amusement park rides that you have to figure out in this really cool, fun way. Now, like I said, there are three games in this series, and this is just one, and there are eight games in each box. So this is replayable, it is shareable, and I think it's just kind of the neatest thing when you want a short deduction game. There's a little bit of a race feature, but the smartest detective is not always the fastest detective. And this game really encourages you to be efficient with your clues. Now, what clues do you actually get in the game? Absolutely ridiculous way. It's so fun. All these different clue cards are just put face down in the center of the board, and there's just tons and tons of these clues. And the clues that you're gonna draw for the game are dependent on the color of the key that you pick. So each key is one puzzle, and that's gonna be essentially figuring out who did it with what weapon and what uh, particular amusement park ride they sabotage. And so you're gonna be looking at these saying, okay, this is the orange key, so you're only drawing for orange in this particular round. Now, you're also not just looking at orange, you're looking at how expensive is this clue? Is this clue kind of cheap? Is it a two, meaning you only uh, rack up two points? Or is it gonna be a really big, juicy piece of information and it's got like a four on it? The other thing you're taking into consideration is the type of clue that it offers. Is it helping you identify the weapon or maybe tying the weapon with a particular suspect or a location? Is there photographic evidence? Is there time clocks? You can see who worked what shift and what days during the week, which are the suspects. They're dressed up as these creatures, these animals, uh, in these costumes at the amusement park at Llama Land. Uh, what about the rides do you need to know? Everyone has a kind of like file folder and the file folder gives stats on these suspects. And so you get their heights, you get their age, you get their name, you get their shoe print because that can be evidence that you find in the game. You also get the length and the weight of each of the three different uh, weapons that were used to sabotage. You also get the characters that these particular suspects play and on what date, so you know when they're in the park and when they're not in the park, because they are on three different days. There was a sabotage on one day, and the next day, and the next day, and each of the people can only be sabotaging one with one weapon and uh, one particular location each day. And so that's how this whole grid works. And on the back, you've got a picture of the park, and the park shows you where particular photo booths are, and it has this angle where you have to really figure out on a, on a 2D map in a 3D world where the picture was taken, where was this picture taken and what do I see, and how does that give me information about my particular suspect? So there's some really fun stuff happening in this game. There's a mirror because you get a footprint, but you get one footprint and you have to get the other footprint to match it with the suspect. So it's like you get the right one and then you need the left one. So you have to do a mirror image. It's so cool, it's so fun. And you're just like grabbing cards and you're doing clues and you're checking off things and you're doing a dry erase board on your own player sheet that has a little guard so that you know your opponents can't see it. There's so much information and deduction here that you have to draw cards knowing that whoever thinks they've figured out the puzzle first will draw the key from the center 
but you're going to count up the amount of points that you have expended to get to your answer. So the fastest person simply takes the key and that's a tiebreaker. So I think it's just the neatest way to encourage people to move quickly, but maybe not too quickly, because if you're more efficient, if you use fewer clues in value, it doesn't matter if you take the key first. If you get the answer right and you have a lower number than your opponents, you win. And it lasts as long as it needs to last. So the person takes the key, everybody else at the table just keeps taking clues um, as long as they want to, as long as they can until they figure it out. And the way it's revealed is every player will take a look at the board. And the board is color-coded. And on the back, you're gonna see a three-digit code. And the code is simply based off of what were, what were your results. And you're gonna look at your sheet on the inside and say, okay, it's a six, zero, one. And then you're gonna look at that color on the back and see if you were right. And you're gonna pass it to the next player, to the next player, to the next player. And you're gonna find out if you got it correct. And then, of course, everyone who got it correct will then look at who did it in the fewest amount of clues. And if there's a tie, then you're gonna to go to that tiebreaker, which is the key. This game is fun. It is so just neat. I don't think I've played a game like this before. I love deduction and I love puzzles. And I think there's just something where you want to play like two or three games in a row. That's that's what Lewis and I found. We sat down and we were we had all the cards out and we were like, oh, let's play again. Let's play again. Let's play again. And we kind of just wanted to race through the whole box, but it's just fun. It makes you want to play again. And each game, no way lasts more than half an hour. And so it is a fast deduction game that is incredibly rewarding. And it's based solely on your own clue taking and your own deduction because you're playing by yourself and you're doing all of this really kind of fast thinking and problem solving and it's just clever. So for me, I'm going to go and snatch up the other, the key in the series, because I want to just have this challenge. I want to play this and I want to share it with other people. This plays one to four. And so you can do solo and you're playing essentially against a, a numbered list of how many clues you take and what category you kind of put yourself in if you're a really good detective or if you need a little bit of work because you took way too many clues to get to the answer. But I think it's more fun with more players. I really do because you're, you've got that pressure of the person who takes the key and really kind of says, I think I did it. I did it quickly. I think I did it efficiently. And if I did, then I'm going to break uh, ties with it. And I'll tell you one thing there was a tiebreaker uh, in one of our games and I didn't get the key. And we had the same exact number of clues that we had used. Remember, it's the number, the value, not the number of cards because certain cards give more information than other cards. And we had the same number and then Lewis had gotten the key because he was faster than me. And so he won that game and I was like, no, it was so exciting. It was so fun. And uh, we just have such a good time with it. And afterwards we talk about, well, how did you get this? And what clues did you get there? And you know, what clues kind of like tripped you up? And it's, it's kind of fun because afterwards you want to talk about it because during the game, you're just laser focused on your own particular puzzle. I just wholly recommend this game. And then again, they're replayable. I imagine if we pulled this out in six months, we will have forgotten everything and we could play it again easy. And so whether you want to re-gift it to someone or whether you just want to play it again in a half year or a year or three years or however long you want to wait, it's just going to give you that feeling yet again of trying to find it. And you're never going to grab the same clues because the clues are just always going to be shuffled and kind of just must about across the table. And so there's just a whole lot to like here and not too much to critique. I think this is just a great short, fun puzzle game that if you play one, you're going to want to get the other two in the key series. So have fun playing the key, particularly Sabotage at Lucky Llama Land, like I did. I'll see you later.